Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? We're back with another episode of Mindless Horror Podcast, Summer of Guests. Um, it was a very, very fun weekend, but it was also a very tiring weekend. How tired are you, Tony? <sighs> I'm st Even though I stayed home today, I'm very tired still. Oh, I went to work. I worked today, too. Oh, is that right? I was editing all day. Oh, oh okay. And, yeah. How many have you posted today? Uh, f three? Oh, okay. okay. Gonna go on four? Oh, I'll give you the benefit. Yeah, so. All right. We are here joined with two people who are probably just as tired as we are, um, just as, as stressed out as we are. <laughs> <laughs> this is the life of a YouTuber. Oh, Fracture Compass it's Productions. Been a long welcome, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. We are. Hello. What's up, guys? <laughs> as I, as I <laughs> <laughs> uh, So we're back. Uh, we were going to do a podcast with them in person yesterday, but uh, the staff. As we were setting up inside, kind, kindly told us to leave because they were closing down. They wanted to go home, I think. They wanted to go home. So at that point, where I was like, okay. So that's when I texted you saying we were outside. Um, Bree couldn't leave the convention center because she was waiting for Jackie. So we were yeah. like, we we're in a way, we were kind of like, thank God she said that because we're both exhausted. <laughs> so it worked out for everyone at the end. <laughs> it worked out for everyone at the end. Um, so we are here right now where everyone's kind of like still zombified a little bit. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Not Scary Farm panel, what they announced yesterday. We got a little bit of uh, news we're going to talk about. And, yeah, let's let's hit it. Uh, John Cook is – His third panel. Third panel. <laughs> that boy did three panels in, basically in a row. In, yeah, in one in day. In a row, they, yeah. In a row. He was like – uh, Haunted Hayride, boom. Queen Mary, boom. Freaking not, not, boom. And it was like, shit, man. I was like, I don't know how you do this job. <laughs> On top of that, you're going back and forth to freaking Orlando and all over the yep. world for other stuff. Even the captain during the Dark Harbor panel was like, how many haunts do you work at? All of them? He's like, yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're all of them. Uh, so that you know, I gotta give props to him first and foremost because he is just a trooper for what he's doing. He is killing the game right now, and um, I'm excited for Ellie Haunted Hate Ride actually this year. So, uh, it be. but it should be good. Should be really good. It um, should be awesome. Not Scary Farm. Let's talk about Not Scary Farm. So we got the return of uh, Dark Ride and the return of um, Infected Special Ops. Um, the last year. The last year. His last, it'll be his first, his last. So uh, well, we'll go out with a bang then. Literally, literally, <laughs> literally. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, I've gone to Special Ops three years, I believe. Yeah, three years. This will be the third year this year. So yeah, it'll be my third year going through nice. it. I'm going to miss it because I'm glad he brought up video games and stuff like that. Because when I p play this interactive maze. That's what I feel like. I'm in, I'm in a video game. It brings the video games that I love to life and stuff like that. We're going to be getting um, new, a new scene, which I'm very excited to see. Two new scenes. Two new scenes. Two new scenes. Two new scenes. We'll talk about those. We'll talk about those, and I'm, I'm very excited. So what do you, what, since you ladies have been in the maze, how do you guys feel about this? It's time. It's time for it to... To go. How, how do we feel about it leaving yeah. or the, or new the two new rooms? Yeah, both everything, pretty much. Okay. Uh, how do you feel about leaving? How, about it leaving? Yeah. Uh, 
Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I think Mike's Mike said it pretty well. Like Infected has had a good run. Like we have been a part of it. So there's always that special place in your heart for it. But he said it's such a good spot. It's such a, a huge footprint for another maze. And things that have been there historically have always been like some of the longest in the park, like Forevermore. Mm -hmm. I think 13X Murder Manor was there. Blood, Terror of London was there. Blood Bayou. Blood Bayou was there. And those have all been like really long, intense mazes. So I think it's time to consider freeing up that real estate. So I hope Infected has a really solid year to go out on a high note and bye. Bye. Boom. Bye. That's all oh, I can God. say, you know. It, rest in peace it's over um yeah i'm very much looking yeah. forward to getting a gun one last time and shooting some zombies um yeah putting myself in characters footprints is that i know i cannot achieve in real life but hey that's the beauty of imagination <laughs> right um yeah i you know i think the the concept of it is something that's beautiful and it's something that was maybe not original but it, it was a good thing to bring to the park I want to see them continue to do something that is that interactive, but I think it's time to put those zombies in the grave. Yeah. Um, I really do. Cause I know zombies is like, it's at a point where like, there's still a big following of them, but I think it's at a point where it's slowly kind of dying off. If you really think about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. And with that, it's like, I mean, they, I mean, it, it John had talked a little bit about how much of a struggle they, they all talked about how much of a struggle it was to when they first brought it to uh, Knott's in the beginning when it was at Camp Snoopy of how much of a struggle that was to do for the first time. So when they decided finally they wanted to kind of minimize it but kind of build a story around it uh, in like a town and stuff like that where they had more control over things. Um, that was kind of interesting to hear that because I was one of the guys that was like mad at first when I found out it wasn't going to be in Camp Snoopy only because like I would have loved to be running around camp snoopy being like parkour and stuff like that and you know just doing all that stuff but then when i found out why i was like okay as someone who creates you know for them in their if i was in their footsteps i would i would exactly i do the exact same thing only because creatively it's probably a struggle to build um especially when you have all that space but you probably only have so much you can work with um that they they i, I see what they did but um, I, I'm excited to see the two new scenes in the in the um, in the maze. What is it? The convenience store? Yeah, we got the, we got uh, the Hernandez convenience store. I believe that's what I jotted it as, and the meat market or the, the meat packers. Packers. So I'm excited to see those two. <laughs> the meat warehouse. Meat warehouse. warehouse. I'm sorry. Um, it's going to be. Crazy. So I'm excited to see those two. What do you What do you guys think on this? What What, do you, what are your thoughts on these new scenes? That meat warehouse is going to be gross. Um, so it's going to be nasty. <laughs> I'm guessing, obviously, we just turned the department store into the convenience store. Um, so you're probably going to go into that scene right off of Alpha Streets. And then you have the dressing rooms of the department store that are now the new bathrooms. And then there's a hole, I believe, that they had built. As I was looking at the schematics yesterday that they were showing up on the screen. Um, that goes into i'm assuming that the warehouse is now going to be the, the meat warehouse. warehouse um and those were in the past two trouble spots for us in the maze we didn't necessarily have anybody in there um we had and i remember last year we put somebody in the hallway so that that person was kind of going from where the into the department store and kind of traveling that hallway back and forth to get everybody to push them into the warehouse. And then the warehouse the wasn't too much of a problem, except for the fact that you had them coming through and then they were going underneath the scaffolding, which nobody <laughs> was ever hardly on because it was supposed to be that you could have like two people up there and they would be fighting They'd be fighting that was um, the original would, plan the original plan was to have a zombie and a basically a squad leader fighting up on that scaffolding as you're going under it and then coming through and having zombies on either side so it would have made it like a lot more intense um but we never really had anybody up there per se, and then we would just have people just not paying attention. They're shooting zombies, they'd walk, they'd walk right into the the overhang of the scaffolding and just fall flat on their back. 
I watched it happen so many times. So I don't know if that element is still going to be in there Probably. of you going under or if they're because the way the pictures looked yesterday, it was like meat stacks of like, like hanging sides of beef. I mean, it would make it easier if they took I, I warehouse wasn't my favorite spot to be in, even though I think it could be the scariest. I think that yeah. this addition which will probably take a lot of stuff that they've used in the past, like hanging hanging stuff, because it's an easy element to scare people with. It'll probably make that area a lot freakier. And you're supposed to have those two new characters in like actual characters inside those areas. Kind of like how they like have like juggernauts in their area. Right. Like. So the juggernauts in there. So you're gonna have a convenience store clerk basically in that area and you're gonna have that meat warehouse guy zombie in that area. So I think it'll freshen I'm, up that yeah that I'm, spot. I'm excited to look for it. That's that's if, if that's where I'm just it I'm like ninety five percent sure that's where it's gonna be. <laughs> I could be totally wrong, but <laughs> yeah, I'm super but, excited about the the meat warehouse um, because I feel like like they had mentioned it's gonna cause a lot of close encounters and really change the the firefight from that medium to the long range to really close range. Um, and because yeah. people are gonna be like, oh, I'm trying to kill kill as many people as possible. The scares are going to be great, so yeah. Uh, I'm pretty if the person who's in there look like, I, I know I'm going to probably get scared out of my mind there, but um, <laughs> I'm excited to see how other people get scared as well, and hopefully they get Tony. They won't. Yeah, if the person who's <laughs> in the meat warehouse does a really good job and uses, if there's good, did they say there's going to be hanging bodies? There's not going to be hanging. Well, like well, from the picture, it looked like there was going to be hanging sides of beef. Yeah. So, so if they use I that don't... to their advantage to sneak around and hide and get that pop scare and then retreat. Yeah. Not only is it a good scare, but they're going to be hard to hit with your with the laser. I can also see some issues yeah. with that, unless yeah. like the sides of beef are like off to the side. We'll see. Um, issues. <laughs> we'll we'll see. That a little bit. Just well, I mean, so from what John Asperin was talking about yesterday, it's like when you go into a haunted house, you go into any haunted house or any maze, you are the victim. So what they did with this infected is they give you the chance to fight back. Well, that means giving people these high tech power laser guns and they're hard. They're, they're, they, an hurt. Issue. they hurt. They're an issue. They're, they hurt. <laughs> we have to keep our distance because all of us have been hit upside the head with them. Um, people who decide to uh, take in a little bit more alcohol than others have, you know, they get a little crazy every now and then. And that's really why the squad leaders are there is to like be able to be that forceful, uh, you know, aspect of the maze and calm people down, you know, and like be able to be like, Hey, what are you doing soldier? Go over here, you know, and try to get them through and, and, and try to keep the zombies safe. It's, being a squad leader is more than just, you know, shooting zombies and yelling at guests. It, it really is. We are really there. If you notice there's no blackouts in that maze, it's because the squad leader is taking the place of the blockout, the safety, the security guard. Yeah. So everything that's happening in that maze, we are basically watching our zombies. We're basically watching our guests and we're making sure that we make it a fun time for you. But for those guests who decide to take it a little bit too far, we also have to be that person, you know? I think um, I like that aspect of the maze too because it brings the maze more to life. Um, yeah. Keeping instead of blackout people, you see all the soldiers just kind of doing their job and stuff like that. It really brings them to life and it brings the whole experience to life. Um, it's hard though, being I, a squad leader. <laughs> I bet. I bet it looks insanely hard. Um, but if you have to go, if if those sides of me are off to the side, then that's fine if they create a path. If they're going to be swinging back and forth, I'm just concerned about a zombie being right there and people using the guns to beat the, the sides of beef out of the way and just accidentally, not on purpose, yeah. but accidentally, boom, like knocking right into yeah. the line. Because you, know? you, you have to remember, like, you know, going back to, like, Infected being like a video game, that's how it was designed. All the all the guys who who designed that maze, like you know, both Johns, they're both gamers, like at heart. So they took like concepts from like Left 4 Dead. They wanted to make it a, a real life thing. So when you when we give that guest a rifle and we pump them up in the you know with the quarterbacks right before you get onto the street, sometimes people get really amped up, and it's not because they're doing anything wrong. They're just so excited and they're so happy to be doing this. 
that they might get a little close. So it's not necessarily, there's a couple bad apples that you'll find every night, but that's at every home. Yeah. But people get so excited that you, you as a scare actor and as a squad leader or a zombie have to be very mindful of that, that not only do they have their normal arm reach, but they've got a weapon. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. That adds another, another three feet to their reach. So you just have to be careful and you have to be very mindful about how you scare. Yeah. And how you approach them. <laughs> yeah, I, I, cause I, I get that a hundred percent. That's, that's something that I always take in mind. Like I, as much as, as much fun as I have doing this, uh, it, it's still just, it's part of the show. And there are scare actors that are people like me that are just here to do a, their job as, as to scaring people. So that, that's always something that yeah. I've, um, I've taken in mind just doing that. But I'm not the type of person that just is going to hit someone if they scare me. Like I know what I'm buying a ticket. I know what I'm signing up for. So no, it's like, no. It's like, you know, I mean, he, on the other hand, I don't That's know good. how he's going to react. <laughs> You're going to have fun. I'm going to bring my knife with me. You're going to have fun. I'm going to, I'm going to go with, uh, are you a screamer? Go, are you a screamer? Uh, I mean, totally my screamer. Um, no, he's more of the face hider like that. Well, what oh, did I do maze that we went through? I don't even know what I did. I was, I blacked it out for my memory. I don't even know what you did because I was in the front. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I was, was in the like front. I, I couldn't even hear what you. I don't know if you got. I know you got scared of, about a couple people in the Hall of Shadows. Oh yeah. Like when they came, when they came up to you, that was. I, I think I'm more of like a uh, like not like a like a girl scream, but kind of like oh god. I was. Just, I was just. <laughs> I, I I just I just sit there and laugh because I think it's hilarious. I I just find it funny. Some, it, that's part of that's part of scaring is sometimes you have to go after that one person that you maybe see get scared before you get them and you've already entertained the rest of the group him i, I know tony was entertained just watching me in the hollow shadow i was entertained that could be a reality show and i'd freaking watch it every freaking week um so last year of uh infected and it's done i'm here i'm so excited to see after infected what they bring if they're going to keep doing a interactive style maze or if they're going to just do something else with that space um we'll see um, I was really sad though when he said, "Oh, it was meant to be at Soak City originally." I was like, yeah, "Oh my god!" That gosh, was a big that rumor. Been such time. A fun time. That was. I can see how. I mean, obviously, the safety concerns. Yeah. Are outrageous because water, drinking, darkness, <laughs> dark bad. Bad. It's our, Death. the list can go on and on with that. <laughs> But yeah, that was that was interesting when he said that because he said that you were gonna be put in a van and then it would have like felt realistic you driving over there, yeah, getting your mission. stuff like that. Oh um, man, if they could make, I mean, if they did a one time event like that, I would be. I'd do I it. I would sign up. I would sign up, hands down. That would be a logistical nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, that no. line would ever. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it this way: Infected already has problems, like with line control, just because of the way it's pulsed. If you put people in a car, oh my god! <laughs> I know they would have to rent out like so much. They wouldn't even have to go vans. They would have to do U-Haul trucks. That's how freaking much room they would need. Like you can't even do a van because a van can hold like what eight people at the most usually. You get a U-Haul truck, you can you can load up like at least thirty people in there if you really if you really wanted to squish them in there. Probably more. It depends what size they get. I'm thinking of like the big ass U-Haul truck. Hello. So. It's gonna be a hayride. <laughs> so. It'd be like that uh that one scene in uh in, in Jackass, you know what I mean? I've never seen it. Oh, you never seen Hello? it? Hello. 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 <laughs> uh, you cut we... out. Are we oh, out? Back. We're back. Oh, you're back. back. Okay, you're back. Okay. I yeah. was like and... No, cuz I was trying to click on you guys and it would it was like just not letting me click on you. I'm like, "Okay, what's, <laughs> what is going on?" Zombies got him. Yeah. Zombies got him. <laughs> Minor technical difficulty. We're back. <laughs> But nonetheless, U-Haul trucks would be amazing. Oh man, it, it would be fun. I would, I would not disagree. It would just, we would have to do like signups, basically, like they did for upcharge for uh, what's it called, Tra trapped, and like do upcharges, and yeah, then we could probably do it, and basically like blindfold you, take you out. I would never put <laughs> anything out of the question. I don't think that they're going to get rid of that system. It just wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Like from a logistical point of view. And I think we've said this before that, I mean, personally, and, and Tales of the Fog, I think, was the first person to mention this. It's, that's why I was like, oh, my God, it's such a good idea, is to take the system that Infected uses and move it over to Dark Entities. Yes. 
you know, then you'd feel like, you know, then colonial. I feel like I'm in an alien, alien movie. Yeah, in an alien movie, exactly. Then I feel like so. I'm freaking Ripley. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's something that, like I said, Tales of the Fog, I think, were the first person that I heard say something like that. God, that'd be such a good okay, that, I didn't, transition. I'm sorry. For, I, didn't, I didn't get any of that last part because it was just like cutting in and out. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I just infected system would work well over there. And yeah, I think definitely. that would be the perfect transition once infected, you know, dies mm. and goes away. Especially with all that money they spent on the system. So yeah, that was a lot. A lot. a lot. a lot. A lot. Recycle it. Well, and that's my thought. I was like, cause I was, you know, we were talking about it today and I'm all like, um, cause they do sell off mazes. Or, in, or sometimes they ship off mazes to other Cedar Fair parks. Yeah. Why you go back east, you see, like, you know. Corn stalkers. Corn stalkers and things like that. And so we're like, uh, Fallout shelter. I was like, are they going to ship it off? Are they, did they sell it off? Or are they just going to destroy infected and keep the guns? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Find out in the near <laughs> all future. All in good time. All in good time. Yeah, all, all in good time. Um, Dark Ride. Another fan favorite returning. Um, it's certainly one of my favorites. Um, with a new... Two new scenes or one new scene? Two new scenes. We got gift two shop. new scenes. Gift shop and then security. Oh, yeah. They added, like, a tower. Oh, what am I doing? Um, so the gift shop sounds interesting. Very interesting. Um, and I, I, would hear, I would hear a lot of jokes in the panel of uh, it's, not, it's not a way for us to sell you merchandise. Because I guess that was like the big, the big joke there, which I thought was hilarious. Um, and everybody was like freaking out, like I wish you guys would try to sell us merchandise in there. They, they're, going to, they're not going to sell it in there, though. No, not in there, obviously. But um, that it looks, it looks like it's going to be uh, an, uh, another cool in- ending. Um, I think they. What was? Did we, it? did we lose them? Did we lose them? No, they're working. They're moving. Did we, we, no, we're okay. 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 All right. Um, the original ending was, of course, uh, what was it? The big reveal at the end, right? The jungle gym. The yeah. jungle gym <laughs> that looks so much fun that I want to go play. Into the into the murder out or into the murder room, right? Yeah, into like the gears, the gears, all the, the gears room, cranking, yeah. and then it goes back out into the jungle gym, and then you exit. It's yep. like a big playroom for adults. That's what it is. And I, I think just, when John I Cook that. made that that area, he looked at it. And was just like, oh god, what have I done? Because he knew he made a playground. <laughs> That's so. It's so cool, though. It's like it's people, something that I would love to do. Made it a playground. <laughs> yeah. He gave the scare actors like they want to come to work now. You know, like if you didn't already want to come to work, now it motivates you even more to want to come to work. You know, it's like if I was in that yeah. maze every night, I'd be like, all right. Tonight yeah. we're we're gonna jump off that thing and scare people right there. <laughs> but uh, no, pretty I'm, much I'm, all of that is kind of like. Yeah, it's like okay, tonight we're jumping off that to scare people there, and then tomorrow we're gonna go off that to jump. Yeah, that's how I would organize my nights. <laughs> like, this is what I'm doing tonight. This is how I'm scaring people. Jumping off of everything. Yeah, I'm jumping off of everything. Um, yeah. But fun to work. let's see, and then they got the surveillance room, which sounded pretty cool. Yeah, I, I like the idea that he brought interactivity into the the maze there. Um, I think John had mentioned that one mm-hmm. of the Johns, uh, the idea of like pressing one of the buttons and it'll interact and make the room change a little bit. So I was like, oh, that's really cool to like not just make it something you can walk through, but once again adding interactivity because people need some form of sensory um, pleasure, I guess, and things. So that'll be nice. I mean, you're telling me you see a big red button, you don't want to push it? Oh, I know, I want to press it. <laughs> I have so much fun on Twitter pressing all the random buttons. Yeah. Press the button. <laughs> press the button. Press the button. Don't press. Press. That's a that's a cool concept that I I I still haven't watched the panel all the way through. Um, but I think that's something that's going to add. I don't know. It's it's kind of like infected where you have that opportunity to fight back. It gives you something to do and something to focus on, but that red button could also be a distraction. Oh yeah. So beware. I'm pretty sure Dark Ride it will be your demise. It will be your demise. <laughs> but also what I was just thinking of is for the 
the gift shop, mm -hmm. don't trust anything. Especially if there's like a big prize teddy bear. Trust everything, buddy. I'm gonna touch it's everything. all for sale. <laughs> all for sale. Yeah. Everything. There was a, a joke last year when we went to, was it like orientation or was it the the movie night? And something that we did all together, like as a, as a whole cast at Knott's, where they called out the chair from Dark Ride. Mm -hmm. And they're like, and it's this little tiny girl. And she's like, I was the chair. And they're like, that girl got the most scares out of any of you last year. <laughs> Yeah, there was a chair. I remember that chair. Yeah, I was a uh, the the first year I went through that maze, it got me because I was just like walking, and it's just a chair. Like it's like you wouldn't expect anything of it, and then it just popped out at me, and it scared the shit out of me. And yep. then the second year I went, I was like, all right, I know the chair. And I was like, not this year. <laughs> not <laughs> this year, chair. How do yeah, but we've got. The track? Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Good. Yeah, how do they go about having the track on the floor? Is it just like painted on the floor? Is there actual like a lip in the floor for the track? There, it, it's actually just painted on it. It's, it's um, got like metal on it though, doesn't it? I don't I remember know. being able to it's, feel it. The yeah, first year. it's not. There's not a lip. It's not like a normal track. I know in the in the premiere, like in the oh my god, what's it called? The commercial, basically for oh, it. The trailer. It looks like an actual dark ride track, but. When you walk through it, it's not because th that would be a complete tripping hazard. Oh, yeah, no, that's what I was like. I wonder how they yeah. feel about like making it look like it because, yeah, obviously, it is a tripping hazard. And when yeah, I think, I think, I think, I don't know. I don't know. It's still cool though because there, there's even some spots in that where you're like tripping or like not tripping, but there's the cars. Yes, you have to get around, you have to walk around the cars. I'm laughing at the idea that he said I would fall because I know it's true. I've seen him fall at like I've seen him fall like in slow motion, but in real time. <laughs> if you can believe it or not, he was walking up a step, and the way he fell down was like so slow motion, but it was in real time. And I was just dying of that. I was like, "How does that even happen?" There was a glitch in the matrix of some sort that just happened right now, and I got to see it. So, no, I was just—I'm sorry—I was thinking about him doing that. Um, That's funny. That's funny. So, what do you guys think of uh, Smiley Sam and Baby Fool? I feel like Baby Fool is going to be terrifying. Because I feel like it's going to come out of nowhere. I feel like that's maybe the teddy bear effect of, like, kind of yeah. like things sitting there, and then it's just going to come up and chase you. <laughs> I'm just a fan of horror in general, so I'm excited to see what they look like. Yeah, I, I don't remember all too much what Smiley Sam looks like. I'd have to go back and look at the panel. She just looks like a dirty convenience store clown kind of girl. Because it's a girl. Yeah. So she's going to... her her. She doesn't realize that there's stuff going like that. The apparently that the the, the dark, dark ride, ride is shut taken down. Over. <laughs> I think she, she does, but she's like she's just still trying to sell you stuff. Oh, <laughs> like, I really hope she's like. I, I hope swear. She's funny. I really hope so. Like, kind of like oh buy this, buy that, like just to like take our attention away. Yeah. Set up for that scare. That'd be fun. I'd be. I would totally be like, hey, you want to buy? <laughs> just grab all my money take it <laughs> two for 25. Take it. i'll take everything take it yeah Have we'll it see i'm 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 excited for this year's this year we didn't, i didn't get to go through dark ride last year i did not either because i was working but um we're gonna go through it this year <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm gonna go through everything this year yeah. that's uh we, we got what are we doing opening night I don't know when we're going, but that's the that's the goal opening that's night. That's the goal is opening night. Yeah. Either that Thursday or Friday. Yeah. So we'll be there. I'm probably yeah. gonna go. Yeah, we're gonna go opening night. Maybe, if I want to, I will do a solo trip by myself. Unless you want to go. I don't know. I was kind of looking at their uh, season pass. It's only a hundred. <laughs> Maybe I'll get that then. Yeah. <laughs> that season pass pays for itself yeah. in two, two visits. In two visits. Yeah. 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 Season pass is 100. That goes the same with the frequent fear pass for Universal. It pays for itself in like two visits. Yeah, because yeah, I don't want to pay for Express because Express is like, really expensive. So uh, we might as well split it up and do the season pass. Yeah, we could take our time doing stuff too. Yeah. Be fun. Yeah. Just, we, you know, we do pay for the Express only because we can only make it out there one time. Yeah. Oh, I do so. too. I do. I'm doing an opening night just so I like to go. I like to take my time doing all the mazes and stuff. But, uh, I'm probably gonna do that in a frequent fear, and then a uh, special little appearance from the kitty Salem. Yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. Um, but yeah, we're excited for this year. 
cannot wait. It should be a good year. It's going to be fun. Shout out to Brie right now because uh, she's got some mean Han Solo vibes right now. You do kind of have a Han Solo vibe oh, with, with your buttons. I know. I'm like, I wore this to, I wore this to Galaxy's Edge on the, I think the cast premiere or whatever, and they, they were like, oh, he's all like, you're with the smugglers, resistance and smugglers yeah. and blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, right. Now, you ready for the sad news? What's the oh, what's the sad news, bro? Ronda Rousey's making a shitty movie. Oh, you did tell me that. I don't know if that's sad news or good news. I don't know what it is yet, but I watched the trailer and I was sad. I was like, you've been off wrestling for that long and this is where your careers come to? <laughs> oh, no. Jackie, I had a conversation. <laughs> I was like, you've been off of UFC, then you went to wrestling. You had a great run in wrestling, and then now you're, like, doing this. So I was like... What, what is she doing, Tony? Do you mind telling me? <sighs> okay. For the audience who doesn't know, I am, a, I am a big wrestling fan. I love wrestling. Um, and so I, I keep up with a lot of wrestlers on social media, on YouTube, whatever it is. Ronda Rousey has been putting up videos teasing that she wants to come back to wrestling. And if this trailer is any indication that she might be returning pretty soon, or if it's just something that she decided would be fun, but it just looks horrible. Um, and she's probably going to watch this and kick my ass, which will be the best. Will. It will be legit the best ass whooping. It will be the best ass whooping ever because I got kicked, I got my ass kicked by Ronda Rousey. So. She'll put you in an arm bar if I break your like, arm. Probably. Um, it would be a story to tell, definitely. But nonetheless, she's making this. I know, right? She's great content for the channel. Yeah, Ronda Rousey puts in a hard arm bar, breaks my arm. Can't go to any of the haunts this year. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's going to be a movie called Tables. Uh, she She's doing it with Devon Dudley, and I saw Paige made an appearance in it, too. <laughs> All the better reason to go to the haunts. <laughs> um, so the idea of the movie is kind of... Oh, do we still have them? We still have oh, them. Okay, they're good. I think you're blind, dude. No, bro, I keep seeing them free. <laughs> I've seen them move fine. <laughs> Maybe I am blind. Maybe I'm tired. I don't know. It's still tired from yesterday. Yeah. Yep, that that shit now. See, there you go. It's glitch in the matrix. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, this movie is about basically sum it up. It's about these tables who are trying to kill them, and they're gonna be destroying all these tables. If you guys aren't familiar with the Dudley Boys, they have these Ten Commandments of wrestling that they do, and um, Devon Dudley says them all in the trailer, and I was like, this is really happening. Wow, I saw it on Bloody Disgusting, and I was like. Is it really that worthy of a an article to share? I, I guess it is, but it's happening, and knowing me, I'm going to watch it, and I'm going to criticize it, and, yeah, that's how I feel about it. <laughs> I mean, you have money to burn. I guess so. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> you said it was going to be on YouTube, right? I th think so. I mean, I hope it's... Hopefully it's cheap. Because if it's going to be something I have to pay for, then you can bet your ass I won't do that. If it's $5 or less, I will pay. You're going to pay. I'm just going to... we're going to do a great spoilers uh, review of tables. <laughs> I'm going to let you host that podcast. I'm just going to sit back and just... Stay there. Left. <laughs> stay quiet. On to <laughs> real news that actually matters. Um, Ghostbusters 2020 got some new photos. Oh, did it? It did. Um, hmm. You haven't seen them. Have you guys seen them? I know you've seen them. I saw them. You sent them to me. So is that movie? Movie. The movie. The movie. Yeah, the um, Ghostbusters 2020 movie that they're doing with the original cast. Um, Stay Puff Marshmallow. Oh, nice. nice Stay Puff. Ad. Got it. Got it. I showed her. Oh, you showed her. Okay, cool. And then there's yeah. uh, the original hearse. Oh, that. It looks like it's all beat up. Looks like it's all beat up. Dude, it's been like, what, 30 years? I mean, I don't know. I can't care. <laughs> that thing looks old. It and does. I like, didn't somebody keep it in like a garage or something? Uh, unless oh, they no, they, they purposely made it like that yeah. just to make it look all beat up and stuff like over the years. But yeah, you would think someone with the original hearse would keep it in amazing shape. Because I know if I had a car like that, I would probably never drive it. It'd just be sitting in somewhere. 
with the big thing on it. I probably <laughs> what I would probably do if I owned a car like that was set up projection screens and pretend I'm driving it. I know that's very nerdy <laughs> and geeky and and stuff, but that's how that's how cautious I'd be of cars like this. We got a great damn screen. I mean, like, yeah, like Ecto One is up there with the DeLorean. DeLorean you know, it's yeah. just one of those cars, like <laughs> picture cars. Yeah, picture cars that people love. Yeah, that's so. one of my favorite cars. My all-time favorite car, though, is the one from Supernatural. Huh. The uh, the Impala. The Impala. Impala. Is beautiful. I've always wanted that car. I would, I would a lot of the Impala. <laughs> I'm talking about classic movies, though, like older, older movies. You're talking the about Impala? classic movies. No, the, the yeah, classic movies. It's but like the Impala is gorgeous, gorgeous, but it's still active today. Would you rather drive the DeLorean or the Impala? Well, I would drive the Impala. So then, well, oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> now, now that changes the subject now because is the DeLorean decked out Back to the Future or is it just a regular DeLorean? It would have to be decked out back to the Then future. I'm driving the DeLorean. No, hands down. I mean, I mean, we're going 88 and we're going back to the future, man. I If it's decked out like back to the future, I'm, I'm driving that DeLorean. No. We're going back to the future. Giant. Silence everything. No, I'm just talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You're the Flintstones car. Yeah, let's just use our feet to go everywhere, huh? I'm just, that'd be funny. Um, Midsummer mm -hmm. Scream. Oh, no. What do, how was your guys' weekend? Let's talk a little bit about that before how we was it? Our, our weekends were so starkly different. So it, how was your weekend, honey? Uh, I mean, it was good. Wow, it was it was an early, early start. We got there at 6.30 in the morning both days. Um, That's... And it was just, I feel like it was just zero to 60 within like, with the same point. And she was heavily involved with Decayed and I'm like, I'm kind of used to having her around, but I was like, you know what? Like. Now they're frozen, Sammy. I can do this, okay. but she, she, met up with, she met up with us on Saturday. And was with the HH pen. HH pen. Everybody's from. Hello. I get you back. Can you see us now? I could see you. Okay. Now hold on. It's frozen again. Now. Now I can't do. I can't see or hear you. We got you. We in. We, we in. Back. We're back. We're back. We're back. back. You're back. Yeah. <laughs> so I. Honestly, it's doing the it same thing. It's doing the same thing. It might not show it on your guys, but it's doing the same thing to my camera. Yeah, you're mm. a little pixely, yeah. and it cuts in and out here and there, but yeah. I, we're doing okay. So, I mean, maybe this will probably be just an audio one then, just for the sake for both of us. <laughs> just so That's fine. I look like crap. Anyway. We're, we all look like we got hit by a bus yeah. Yeah. filled with Halloween. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I can't even answer your question straight because I am just I just feel like – this weekend was like a blur, and I can't believe it's already over. It, it ended like, too fast. It did. It was like I, I last week. I was like, "Oh, dude, Midsummer Scream! I get to go see everybody. Fucking gonna go through panels and check out." Then fucking Monday morning came. I'm like, "Fuck, man, that shit's over already." I was like, "I gotta yeah. go back to reality now." Shit, and I still didn't yeah. get to reality. I stayed at home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but even yeah, like our our weekends were so different because you. Like, I gave you the schedule for the panels, and I was, like you said, like, really involved with Decade this year, so I was down there most of the time. Yesterday, I was down there the whole day. Saturday, I was able to go to the Horror Nights panel with you guys, so it, I just think that we had equally exhausting but polar opposite weekends. Definitely. I mean, I, 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 saw, I saw both of you, so I, I, I could see how busy you guys were, and we were just the same. We were kind of like chickens without our heads. We were just... All right, from opening till this time, we can walk around, do the panel, or, you know, walk around, do the Hall of Shadows, and then from this time to this time, we got a panel. From this time to this time, we got a podcast, and then we got to go stand in line for another panel, and then we got to go do another podcast. So the next day, same thing, you know, and it's like we were everywhere, so it was like just trying to get footage and stuff like that, no. <sighs> running into everyone. I almost feel like opening, opening the show floor – an hour and a half earlier would be better for like 
I don't know, or just spacing out the panels a little bit more, making it three days. I don't know. Something, because it's so big now. Like, even when we walked in to set up for Decayed Brigade, when I looked at the show floor, I about fell through my pants. Like, it was just so big. And there There's no way you can see all that in two days and go see the panels you want and go see the shows you want and go to the theater stuff, go to the kitten lounge. There's no way. That though, I mean, like we were, I walked the show floor. I know you kept saying it's big. I just, I feel like it was just as big as, as last year. I don't. And I think that was, that's just me because I just, I get kind of overwhelmed with things sometimes, but it, everything's big to me. So I'm all like, it's, it's just as big as it was last year in my mind. But the thing that was kind of, I think, frustrating to me was that like I did have to choose like like I wanted to take Mike to the zombie Joe's underground so he could be like scarred, scarred for, life. for life by that <laughs> and I wanted to see the kittens and I wanted to see that but since I had to be in line for the panels and we had to go to this and stuff I was like there's no way there's no way I can do both unless we give something up and then even then some of the panels you had to be there almost an hour and a half early or you all were like not getting a good seat especially i mean for a regular person just going in wanting to like see it like it probably is like not that big of a deal and not that big of a crisis but if when you're wanting to film something it's a crisis you <laughs> need to be in at least the first second third row or on the side you know it was yeah that was how it was for us <laughs> i think for the horn Nights panel we got there what Hour thirty or thirty minutes. Yeah, we, we got there really early. Well, we got there with the other panel. Just, our situation, our situation was a little hard this year. Everyone I went with had GA but me. So I, oh, sure. I was in the gold bat line. They were in GA line, and it's like okay, mm -hmm. when you get in there, save the seats. And I'm just like, well, fuck, I gotta save like four seats, and it's like, then you're in, then you end up being that asshole who fucking saves four seats. You know, so it's like <laughs> I just told everyone next year. I was like, "Listen, we." I didn't mind doing what I did, but let's like next year. Let's all try to get gold bat. Gold bat is really worth its weight in gold. Yeah, you it can't, really is. You can't go wrong with it. If we didn't have gold bat, we wouldn't have been able to go through all the walkthroughs. Like, and even even gold bat and some of the walkthroughs, it's painfully slow. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't we, know. I just I feel like adding that. Friday, but not having any panels on that Friday. It's just vendors and shows would probably alleviate a lot of that. I don't want to say pressure, but a lot of that pressure, and it would let you kind of ease into it. If you're listening to this Midsummer Scream ad Friday, ad Friday, uh, <laughs> yeah. actually make it like yeah. you can, you could do what Comic Con does, and basically you do a preview night. What you only run it for four hours. You don't run it for an entire, you know, day. You literally run it for like four hours. Starts at like three, ends at seven, seven or whatever. And you just come in to preview and look at, you know, vendors, shows, things like that. And then everything will kick off. Yeah, without like major presentations or right. the theme parks fighting for slots right. and for people. I don't know. It's just that's what I think would alleviate a lot of that pressure that all of us felt. Yeah, you know, being people that are that are social media and stuff like that, and even press, like we had media press passes, and we still did not have enough bodies and enough time to do everything that we wanted to do. Yeah, most definitely, and I and I like how you guys because brought up so the uh, the Comic Con stuff because I was literally gonna bring that up too. Uh, they do do Comic Con at this point is such a huge thing that now instead of three nights, they're doing four nights now, where it starts on a on a Thursday and ends on a Sunday. Um, I can see that this convention is reaching that status pretty soon. Give it about five more years, I don't think it will be at Long Beach anymore. I think they're going to have to move to Los Angeles because that convention holds more, and if they're going to be selling out the event, or you know, selling out uh, a lot of the the tickets that they did, and they were guaranteeing like thirty thousand plus people there, or something yeah. like that. Um, they're gonna need to move to a bigger location, no questions asked. Because, I mean, walking around wasn't too bad on the on the show floor, but like you mentioned, with the with the um the the Hall of Shadows, like even with Goldbat, like the line was still slow. Um, 
there was like that brief moment where like if a haunt stepped away to go on lunch or something like that that's when people would wait by to wait for them to come back just so they can hop back in line so they didn't have to wait a line um but yeah. it, it's it, they need to do something like a preview night where you can walk down you have that four hours just to go through all the vendors because i feel like that's enough time to if you want to separately one by one see what they have to offer as to what they're selling and stuff because there's a lot of creative people that go to these events and they sell a lot of amazing things and i feel that with the time given and with like people like us who have to you know cover the event and and the panels and stuff like that we don't have enough time to look around at that stuff even when you're gold yeah, no. bat uh getting in an hour early it's like you're still you still have shit planned within that hour before the crowds get in um and stuff like that uh yeah. so it, it, it's just insane and that preview night would help so much with that extra four hours just to walk around and and see all the vendors and what they're selling that way when saturday morning comes you know what you want you can walk right in go straight to that vendor and then or vendors and just get your stuff and you're good for the weekend that way you can focus your rest of the week on what you need to do well, and I mean, they could, I mean, even on a preview night, they can still sell stuff. If you, they've got, you know, if they set their stuff out all day, you know, they're, they're let in at 7 a.m. Some of the booths are, are like, you know, intricate. Some aren't. Some it takes like an hour or two maybe to set everything up. And it took us six hours to do everything. <laughs> but like I said, some are more intricate than others. I mean, like Inferno Effects is two walls that takes. For all their masks. For all their yeah. masks, it takes time. But some are not and they can set out and they can set their pay thing up and boom yeah. like you let the crowd you let the crowd in at three 12 hours later and yeah or, i think you know, eight hours and you're good. honestly the fact that we're even having a conversation like this like being like we want a possible additional day that's short speaks to how much this has grown yeah like it, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing that that we're even having this conversation and hopefully they you know think about something like this even though they already announced the dates because it is getting so big you can always add something though you can always yeah. yeah and i and i think they would do they would totally they would talk to the convention center and talk say like hey we know we have this day and this day scheduled can we add on this day because they know how much venue and revenue that or you know they bring to um the convention center as far as selling food and stuff like that so yeah, also, if you're listening to this podcast, you heard it here first, get gold back. Mm -hmm. I learned the hard way. You don't want to wait in that line at, for four hours <laughs> to get in. You don't want to have to wait no. to get on the show floor. You don't want to have to wait in the It took you all. four hours? We got there at Sunday. We got there at like 8. How long did it take? Yeah, yeah, we got there at like 8 on Sunday. Yeah, on Sunday, and we got, oh. I got in there like 10, 15, but I had to wait like 45 minutes in the convention center just to go to the floor. So about three. Holy crap. Yeah. yeah, that's a three Because they, they, wow. they said, that I mean, <clears throat> like, it's cold back, it's a 10 to 11 slot. Mm -hmm. um, and then even on Saturday, yes. even Saturday yeah. line just was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, so I know next year, if we don't get media. Yeah, we'll they were telling us it was... It was... They were telling us uh, we were inside the whole time that the the bridge was quadruple switched back. It went down the stairs, down the street, back up, and then, then it, yeah. And we were, I mean, honestly, we got there at six thirty, like seven, and we were like the fifth people in line for gold bat. So like, I did not experience. I was already in any of like waiting per se, except for just waiting outside, knowing that they weren't going to let us in until nine. 30, 30 40. Yeah. So it's just me, but yeah, yeah Saturday I, for us was I don't know. Go back to Yeah, even even with the even just for panel entrances, like you like even mentioned you had to be there an hour early and things like that. Parking was horrible. Mm. Yeah, oh and parking, yeah, they gotta sell that issue. Yeah, they parking gotta they park up to lobby. Yeah. Should have just parked the pike. <laughs> it's a beast and it's becoming a bigger beast and it's I think it's just gonna keep growing into this this monster that it's becoming and it's a it's a cool monster, but it's a it's a Listen, lot. Yeah. Here's what I'm gonna do. Next year if I don't get if parking is an issue, I'm bringing this bad boy. Even though it's wooden, it could still hurt somebody. 
if I hit him, and I'm gonna go to war with somebody to get parking. Oh, I'm gonna get shot. I am gonna get shot. <laughs> Stop. Like, a fan gets shot just over parking. I mean, <laughs> they did announce the dates already. You could book a room now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, rooms for us ain't it ain't an issue getting over there. It's just now we know what time we have to get over there. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't our issue. And then it didn't help that we had a concert the night before. So um, we, we we got up the next day, like, dead. And that <laughs> no. made it a little harder. Yeah, like, if, if we would have left right after the convention center and then just went straight home, I think we would have been okay. But we went to see Mumford & Sons right after the, sh the convention. So it was like... <laughs> you guys are crazy. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's not anyone's fault for that one it, he had bought the tickets ahead of time before we even planned on coming and then like they announced like this was getting closer so i was like oh shit well it's the same weekend uh you know we'll be able to do it we'll be fine yeah <laughs> oh, we're alive, so, I mean, I guess that's a win, but... just glad it wasn't a metal or punk show dude because i would have been fucking dead yeah <laughs> Uh, that is that is gonna do it for the Mindless Horror podcast this week. I want to thank Fracture Compass Productions for being on again. Uh, we were yeah. just we're all still dead, recovering. Just think of a hangover, but in, with pain. No, yeah, no, but it's a good pain because for you. That was a great weekend. You don't gotta edit or anything though. I already offered my services. Thumbnails. Thumbnails. <laughs> Make thumbnails for my videos. Thumbnails. <laughs> I can't edit. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'll teach you. I got to teach him a lot. Um, <laughs> you're still learning. You did say you could have yeah. good on the second interview with the Bloodshed Brothers. Okay. Um, oh, one last thing. Decayed Brigade was fucking awesome. Yes. Yeah. So, thank you. Um, I'll pass that on to the team. And uh, you automatically got 10 out of 10 when you played Killer Clowns songs. So. That <laughs> automatically was like, yep, I love this show. Fucking, you got it. Yeah, they, sold me. They they choose. We lost chose together on their own. They do all the choreography. I mean, they've they've been doing this for months. Yeah. Yeah, it it was Mon awesome. Um, when we saw you had another acting role, and I was like, oh shit, look who's got a cameo! Look at that. Come and stand cameo right and here. Did mm -hmm. some tech for that show and. I don't know if anyone saw it, but Kevin swung at me. What show was this act. yesterday? Or... Oh, for, for show two. So if anyone was standing, I think where you guys were sitting the first time, I was right behind you, and I would like try to pick a fight with Kevin because he's the bad guy in that show. And I had the axe in my hand, and he would swing at me, like do an uppercut and then grab the axe, and I'd have to run away again. But... It was fun. It was awesome. It was. It's it awesome was working really with. Cool. They, they get down and, um, yeah, as tall as I am, I don't. My knees would be killing me after that, dude. But though, I respect to those guys and and women, man. They they get down on that shit right there. Yeah, it was good. That's awesome. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. So yeah. shout out to them and shout out to you. Shout out to Fractured Pro Compass Productions for doing what they do. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I remember just conversing with Bree a little bit. We were both done, I think, at the Queen Mary panel, was it? We were just yeah. standing in line. We were just done. <laughs> I was about to show you, like, my phone, and then I was like, you know what? He can just find out what the new maze is. <laughs> <laughs> this is where, this is where, like, I've never put anything up that's not officially released, but, you know, like, I do have people that, message me and i'm like okay great and then i usually test the source as they release it at midsummer so uh, <laughs> we, were, we were getting a big laugh after um never mind i'm just gonna stop there yeah, um <laughs> never mind i'm just gonna stop there <laughs> all right that's gonna do it for the mile Sword podcast before i say anything i'm not supposed to say uh we will see you guys next Same. week and bye yeah thank you see you later guys bye